good morning, evening, afternoon, night, wherever and whenever you may be watching. So we're here to tackle a third task on the gauntlet challenge, and it's to carve something. Well, I'm definitely no carver. I can make my joints, I can chop up wood, but if it comes to making a gnome or, you know, a wood spirit or anything like that, yeah, I'm not your guy. So I'm gonna make a tri stick. Now, I have to admit, I'm not a big believer in tri sticks because you're gonna end up making these cuts and these joints out in the field naturally. So from that standpoint, um, I can see the use of them. I'm just not, I just don't make them. So the first, uh, the first cuts we're gonna make on this tri stick is a domed top. Now this one here is actually pretty useful. This is what I use for all the uh, spindles in bow drill sets. And it really just comes down to coming down about quarter, half inch, and just starting to take off some material all the way around. Now this is just gonna be the first cut, because what you're gonna do is after you make that first cut, you're gonna move halfway up and start taking the ridges off what you just made. So we have the first one. I'm not sure if you can see it, but you can see all these ridges that I made. So I'm gonna go halfway up and start making cuts along those. Now I cut on the ridges because it's always easy to cut on, cut on the ridges. So now that I've got that cut, I'm gonna go again halfway up and start cutting on the ridges of those. So there we are. And again, I'm gonna go halfway up and cut on the ridges. And this will probably give me my finished product. And that's basically right there. That would be considered your dome, your half dome, whatever it is. For a bell drill set, this would be the part that would actually fit into the hearth board to spin. Now, when you're doing a tri stick, it's important to try and find a stick without a lot of knots. And as you can see, I've utterly failed on that part of it. But the next cut we're gonna make is another cut that I use quite frequently with a bow drill, and that's your L7 notch. So I'm just gonna come in here, I'm just gonna make a stop cut. There's my stop cut. Now I'm just gonna remove material up to that stop cut. Morris, Morris Kachansky says that if you're practiced, a trash stick should only take you about a minute to do. Well, I'm not that practiced, I guess. Now, it doesn't take me too long to make one of these trash sticks. Generally about five minutes. So you can see right there that I have my L7 notch. It's called L7 for an obvious reason because if you hold it up this way, it looks like a seven, or if you hold it that way, it looks like an L. But at the end of the day, this is another notch that I use frequently with bow drills because I'll take my uh, slip knot, put it over one end, and use that to basically hold it. I'll, it would actually be flipped in this case, but regardless. So the next cut that we're going to be doing is actually a round reduction. <laughs> I don't use this often, but I did use this when um, I was creating my rope maker. So from that standpoint, you, you're going to basically want to make a stop cut all the way around. Now I hold the knife like this in my fingers, and I'll actually spin it around to make this stop cut. Then 
I'll measure down a little bit and make another stop cut. So with these two stop cuts, I'm not sure if it's visible in the camera or not, but you have one stop cut here, then you just start removing material. This is the, the round reduction. You're just going to remove material. So as you can see, I don't normally talk during these videos, but I've been trying to trying to figure out a way to make myself feel more comfortable talking in these things. Just for the simple fact that usually I don't have a whole hell of a lot to say in the first place. And usually I'm more focused on actually getting the content done. And I know that some folks, they like explanations. Not just written explanations, but they like to be able to hear what the person is saying rather than have to read it. So the question is, is once I go in and actually edit this video, if all you hear is music, that means I was not happy with the way that it turned out. And that's your basic round reduction right there. So like I said, I used this when I made the uh, rope making machine to hold the piece, the, the pivotal piece, in place. The next cut we're going to make is similar to the round reduction, but it's a square reduction. It's the uh, same, same principle, just instead of making a circle, we're going to make a, a square. Now I've only actually ever used this one time, and this was working with a uh, working with a pump drill. And I put a square reduction in there, basically just to to hold a cross member in place. So I made it a square reduction so that the, I could spin this, and the force wouldn't allow this to actually spin around it. Okay, so I've got my two stop cuts. I'm just going to start removing material. And there we have the square reduction. So next on this list, we'll be doing a pot hanger. So someone showed me one time an easier way to do this. Um, just with what I have right now, I'm not going to actually use that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make an X stop cut along here. It's a little off-center, but you can see the X cut right there. I'm just going to be carving up to that X cut. And of course I had to cut it right on a knot, because why wouldn't I? Now the way someone else showed me to do it was to actually baton your knife into the wood at an angle. That'd give you the angle. You can carve that angle in relatively easily, easily so long as you're not doing with these damn knots.
So it's not the prettiest one I've ever made, but it is functional. And while I like neatness does count, at the end of the day, it is functional reform. So you're gonna be creating a beak similar to that. The front part doesn't look all that great, but it comes down into a point here. But the important thing is to get that undercut in there, because what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow you to actually hang something by that pivot and let it swing back and forth. So that is your pot hanger knot. The next cut we're gonna be making is two saddle notches with a hole in the, the center. Now I use these all the time, again with my uh, bow drill sets, because what I do is I feed the cord through, wrap it around and finish it off with a clove hitch. So I use this all the time. tack from both sides you end up with a divot in the center so just trying to clean that up just a little bit so this right here is one of the saddle notches we'll cut one on the exact opposite side I usually just take my blade come around and mark the sides or where the saddle notch actually is so I know where I can keep them somewhat equal. So now what I have is two saddle notches on each side. And they're pretty much even. Now what this allowed me to do is it removed a lot of wood between these two pieces to where I could drill a hole through the center to feed my cordage through. So that's what I'm gonna do next, is just drill that hole. To do that, I'm literally just gonna take the tip of my knife and start rotating it around. start on the other side to meet the to try and meet in the center and there we go we've got a uh, hole drilled through the absolute center of that to which I could feed some bank line and wrap it up do a uh, clove hitch good to go now the last the last notch we're going to do is a uh, it's a root scraper it's going to consist of making a wedge which i use all the time for glutes but then it's going to be cutting a notch in that wedge so we're just going to begin by taking things out like we would any other wedge now what i'm doing is i'm just looking at the edge here and seeing where I need to take material off. So you can see that this side here is larger than that side. So I'm gonna focus on taking material off that side to try and even everything up. You can see that's evening it up pretty well. And there we have a pretty good wedge. Now, like I said, this is the cut that I use when I make glutes or wedges to tap into wood to basically just help me break them apart because they're not split easy. I'm going to take this grip and hold it in my hand like this because what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the end of this and I'm going to cut a notch in this. And this is probably the easiest way to do it. This way, if it slips, it's going to end up getting caught in the web of my hand instead of sliding down and slicing my hand open. And I do hold my hand a little bit away from that too.
And it looks like the school kids have come in. I'm just gonna wiggle this back and forth, taking pieces out of that notch. And there you have the notched end of the root scrape. You can do it better. I mean, that's, it's going to work for what its intended purpose is. And there we go. So this is fairly typical of the tri-sticks that I make. If it wasn't for that knot, I could have made a lot nicer of a pot hook. But, with that said, it will, it is still fully functional. You can see from the side profile that it's notched back up in there so that you can rest that on a stick if your stick isn't shaking like me. <coughs> so this is my carving for the gauntlet challenge. This is the tri-stick. I think I've got, uh, got everything that was encompassed and I appreciate you all watching. And let me know if this uh, this format works. Like I said, I'm trying to talk a little bit more. It's just I just don't have a whole heck of a lot to say. But I do appreciate you coming along, and I do appreciate everyone that subscribed. Um, let me know what you think. Thanks much. Y'all take care now.